everyone, welcome to News Click. The spat between the governor of Kerala and the elected government of Kerala has reached unprecedented proportions. The latest bone of contention is the vice chancellors of 9 to 11 universities in the state. The, we have with us a special guest, Mr. Thomas Isaac. He's the former finance minister of Kerala and a senior CPM leader. He's going to try and tell us what really are the issues over here. Thank you for joining us, sir. Uh, Mr. Isaac, why is the university issue so important? Can you begin by telling us why there is this argumentation between the governor and the government over this? Well, the fight is not between the governor and the elected government of Kerala. It's between RSS and the elected government of Kerala. Virtually, RSS has captured or near captured the vice chancellorship of almost all the public universities in India in various ways. Even JNU, everybody knows what has happened to it. Uh, in fact, the approach is scorched policy. They don't care what happens to the university. They think they can rebuild it later, but they want to destroy the entire liberal edifice of India. So Kerala is one state with uh, uh, 12 universities where they have no role whatsoever. You see. Either no representation in syndicate, senate or any academic bodies. Okay. So this is something they can't accept. Therefore they are using the agency of governor who happens to be by the law legislated by the Kerala Assembly, the Chancellor. Right. So, the Chancellor has certain rights, but Chancellor's rights have been defined by the law. Right. Um, so, he has been making allegations and insinuations on the educational system, which are unwarranted. We ourselves are not very happy with the higher education in Kerala. Let me put it that way. Okay, what there is a bill which is also being passed by the assembly. How will this bill sort of help counter the RSS, as you say, and sort okay. of yes? Okay. Um, I'll come to education per se later. I okay. will refer to your question. So there is law of the university passed by the Kerala Legislative Assembly. There is UGC Act right. by Government of India. Now there are also regulations of UGC. There are three sets of things. Kerala Assembly has said a such committee of three would make recommendation to the Chancellor, which consists of um, a Chancellor's representative, Government's representative, UGC representative. And uh, it can be one. Or three. Candidates. The, uh, panel. They can panel or if they are agreed upon one, they can give one. That's the Kerala law. Now, the UGC Act says everything about everything else, but do not mention anything about how appointments to uh, the vice chancellors should be done. But UGC, now through its regulations, has made it a five-member um, search, search committee with more representation for UGC so that virtually this committee can be manipulated to appoint an RSS for other. Okay. Kerala government would have only one <laughs> representative. Normally, if it is going by merit of the um, academic who is selected shouldn't matter at all. That's right. Now, the present practice in India merit as the least per se. It is political the, um, Hindu uh, allegiance that matters. And therefore, there is a possibility this would be used by the governor who is acting as chancellor. To this. Now, this is a situation all posts were filled. Now, something happened. The search committee, consisting of only three, not five, as per UGC regulation, identified uh, one person only, 
Rajasri, Dr. Rajasri, who is eminently right. uh, technical expert, uh, to be the Vice Chancellor of Kerala uh, Technical University. Right. So she was appointed, she was working, but another person from Kuchin University Academy filed a case in saying that UGC regulations say five and therefore the appointment in null and void. I court single bench threw it out. Division bench also approved it, saying that there is no breach in the procedure. But went to Supreme Court, the other judge said it is against the violation of central law, it is mm -hmm. a concurrent subject, therefore central law would prevail and therefore that selection is null. not null. Yes. As against this, there are very serious experts who argue there is no central law on how to appoint. It is only a regulation. Therefore, Kerala High Court is right. There are some others who say a subordinate legislation, which is some executive order, cannot be above the state government legislation. You see. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parliament is above state government assembly, but how can a UGC, a creature through executive order, overrule mm -hmm. legislative power of a state assembly? This is the fundamental. This is going to be argued. In Supreme Court. And there is a revision petition. Uh, yeah, the that is being filed. So now this person, but court order has ordered. Right. So the Ashri will have to set, set um, opt out. But the governor uses the opportunity to give a notice to all the <laughs> other vice chancellors in Kerala that you have asked for the Supreme Court of you or cannot. Therefore, you are asked to resign. And first we Before 11.30 the next day. Right. That, that, that's all. You see, there is no application of mind. Uh, you don't give time for a um, search for a discussion. You don't talk with Kerala government. The law doesn't say the chancellor can act. needing, But that's another way the country is governed here. So, it is outrightly a move to appoint RSS nominees as far as Chancellor of Kerala. I am putting it on the car table. These are very eminent persons who are the, see, right. uh, that each one of them, uh, um, they are very eminent scientists um, who have worked abroad, uh, whose international publications, uh, who are the vice chancellors of uh, Kerala universities. None of them are uh, CPM people. That's, that's also as I want to stress the CPM members or so none of them. They are liberal. Some like um, Gobinath of Kannur University. Right. He's a leftist, but he's not a CPM <laughs> member. He's, his master's approach to study of history is well known. That's an accepted thing. But, Governor was using this opportunity mm. to capture the universities in Kerala for RSS. So that started the trouble. What happens now? What does the state government recommend these VCs do? So, who gave him this power to the chancellor? We gave him. We legislated. Right. We are going to change the legislature. We are going to make an ordinance and send to him. That's what uh, we are thinking. A political decision has to be made on this, uh, but that is the way yes, both CPM, CPA secretaries have announced. And uh, he may not sign it, ordinance. Indeed. Then assembly will be called to pass this law. Then now the governor's practices are now, even the assembly has passed a law which is not against the constitution, right. which is against their liking, then they keep it indefinitely in their hands. That has happened in Tamil Nadu. He may do it here. They are going against the whole spirit of constitution is here. What is the kind of law or ordinance that you are planning which would help to tackle this issue okay. that you face? There is, uh, there are 
a number of clauses where powers uh, of um, governor is dealt with in the constitution. Most important of which is um, 1631 versus there will be a council of ministers to advise him. Absolutely. So it is advising him. And then in one next clause, sub clause 163, 2, it says exceptional circumstances where governor can act on his own discretion. with discretion. So, this um, our Arif Khan is interpreting 163 1 to mean that the, all the council is to assist him. He has the discretionary powers uh, to do the thing, which is not the spirit of Indian federal constitution, you see. In fact, Ambedkar in the constitutional assembly has specifically said. Um, American, I am quoting him from my memory, American president can dismiss his secretary, um, fully the secretary's appointment is a pressure of the president, mm -hmm. but that is not situation in India, right. nor with uh, not only president but the governors of uh, the state government, they are titular heads because constitution <laughs> framework requires such a head. So, except for these particular circum issues, Such as like for example, whether they have majority, his right. discretionary power he has. But Supreme Court has said majority must be trusted in the assembly, but he has a discretionary um, uh, thing. Uh, so, and suppose the government has lost, the cabinet has lost majority and they make a recommendation, he can not follow that and ask for strength test to be made, strength to be tested in the assembly. So yes, this is 163.2 gives this exceptional circumstances. Right. But he is interpreting 163.1 to say he has the power. So all constitutional experts have pointed out, Supreme Court in number of judgments have pointed out that the fact that there is 63.2 defining exceptional circumstances where he can exercise his discretion. Once such a clause is there is understood that other one he does not have, other circumstances is special to this. So he is mixing it up and <laughs> so all of a sudden one morning he there is a tweet, look at the way a government relation between a government elected by the people and the governor who is appointed by the high, I mean by the uh, union government. Right. He tweets, uh, if any uh, minister uh, uh, undermines the dignity of office of the governor, he may stand to lose pleasure. my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is suddenly all of a sudden pressure doctrine is brought into the whole debate, you know, under British and common law. Apparently, one particular minister has lost his pleasure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, initially, people did not understand, uh, but they really understood. He did not say, I will throw him out, but because the constitution says the ministers hold office under the pressure, anybody appointed. Mm -hmm. Except few three officers under the pressure of the government, then there are conditions <laughs> for exercise of the pressure. So here the condition is very clear: it is the priority of the chief minister to decide who should be in the cabinet. And even chief minister gives an advice, mm -hmm. the pressure is conditional to the advice of chief minister. Right. So he is threatening it. A big controversy erupted, etc. Then he seems to be making. Alien in view, the press has misinterpreted what I said, etc., etc., etc. So, then all of a sudden he sends a letter. Now, this finance minister, uh, he has lost my pressure. I want you to take appropriate action. So, at least he, he understood he cannot take an action. <laughs> Chief minister has to take an action. Chief minister took the action, replied to him, he has not lost my pressure. So, it is the pleasure of the chief minister, the pleasure of the uh, governor, you see. Then 
what what is the meaning of all this hullabaloo on 15th of november you have planned some kind of an agitation at various places what so, is this about this is a political move not administrative or anything as i told you we see it in that line it's an attempt made by bjp to capture the universities in kerala right universities in kerala and on marxist universities <laughs> you see i am an economist we don't teach uh, marxist economics the macroeconomics keynesian <laughs> milton freeman all all this things it's a liberal university system like rest of the country it's a, uh, but there are a lot of le left uh, persu persuaded people in the academics as students as also teachers you see now bjp doesn't want that <laughs> bjp wants hindu the ideology to dominate the entire university system how would it help them if that happens um, um see now immediately no but rss has uh, plans for long period horizon is very long i think these are not new positions these are things thought up because the moment nda came to power people have been at work uh, trying to systematically making otherwise why should somebody start a fight over uh, television institute in pune that has a very significant influence on the cultural making uh, bollywood and everything and bjp wants that and see the way it has done look how all the central universities under the hands the grip it's a jnu but jnu you know everybody knows what happened in the last 3 years right so it's one of the priority areas they want to influence the thinking people still think in liberal terms intelligentsia in india um, india after independence in the all the third world countries had most robust intelligentsia and the, the um, it was so superior to the rest of the third world countries you have uh, ranade and so on um, in the 19th century uh, thinking in terms of um, drain theory um, uh, right. third uh, third world is positions uh, so intellectuals of that day and um, left academic journals like epw and so on which are institutionalizes this approach so they want to destroy that you see um, so the 15th agitation so that is very important and even in kerala our alternative is to preserve them as liberal bastions okay we don't want to dominate that's very consciously chosen why all this um, not um, leftist of masses but very um, accomplished um, academics to be the, the vice chancellors so this is the challenge therefore it has to be met politically it's a political issue yeah. it's not it's a political issue and therefore we will be educate the people and how do you educate the people uh, you when you mobilize some agitations that's the time when they are very emotional angry uh, then you tell them what's happening so we have a program chalked out to where mobilization is taking going to take place in district local level and finally on 15th to march to raj bhavan so people think are we going to <laughs> capture raj bhavan uh, nothing this there are there have democratic uh, rights to protest but we are protesting but through the protest we want to mobilize raise the consciousness of the people of kerala about the university issue or the larger uh, the larger uh, role of the governor our the governor as chancellor and we will pass the uh, amend the law and uh, see primarily the people have got to be with you see left, the politics in kerala is dominated by congress and uh, front and left front for the first time left front has come for a second, second consecutive term uh, otherwise normally it's not yes and um, bjp has a minor role they got 12% votes and they are going down from 16 2016 uh, election and you know, 14 election they have nearly 15 16% vote it has come down systematically 
Um, so now this mobilization creates also public opinion which will influence the public think, think, thinking of UDF. Many, right. some of the senior leaders, including Casey Van Gobel, the general secretary, has condemned the governor. But they have not been so unique, if you call, in Kerala. But in Kerala also, Muslim League, a part of the UDF, has come out uh, against the governor. So we hope that this mobilization also will be helpful in, because it's not against UDF, it's against central government. How can UDF oppose it? So build a consensus on this. Um, try yes. to build a consensus nationwide because other beyond BJP governments are also face, facing same issue. So our mobilization is political. Does it mean that the scope for conversation between the government, government representatives, perhaps even the chief minister and the governor, there's no possibility? No, 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 never it will be exhausted. You see, we work in the federal framework. Uh, we don't intend to <laughs> see it from India. We are part of Indian Federation. And in a federal system, these uh, political differences come. And the, it was the, even before you had Sakarya Commission, you had Punji Commission. And, um, but unfortunately, this first time in Indian history, yes. a party comes to power who professes, does not believe in the diversity of India. That's first time it is happening. Therefore, it is very difficult now. I think they have decided to do away with federalism in India, you see. Everything, even police, which is a state subject, they want same uniform. So, <laughs> one nation, one uniform, then one, uh, one or whatever they want to do. Um, so, um, we have a different approach to policing. Right. Um, there are a lot of criticism against policing, but we want um, uh, police to be friendly with people. So, our Janamaitri police, let's say community police, a variety of community police, community collaborates with the police to, uh, for law and order and under the traffic and so on. We have student police uh, cadets, uh, so all attempts to see, uh, integrate organically the police uh, law and order with the people themselves. Now, it may, they may not agree with all that, I don't know what is their thinking or ideal, but we have different opinions. So, we are against this, our power, but we will converse. Okay. Definitely we will talk to anybody, the central government also will talk. Language issue is cropping up, right. we will talk to them. So, we, don't, we are not considering that uh, the conversation possibilities are exhausted, but it is very difficult to talk to these people, <laughs> really. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining NewsClick. Do subscribe, do share our videos. You'll find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and of course, you'll find this interview on YouTube.